Hello and welcome to makingmusic.com software review. Uh, in this video we're going to be having a quick rundown of some of the things that you can do with IK Multimedia's Syntronic software. So uh, this is the browser page which is the first page you see when you open the software and it's where you get all your presets and starting points from. Um, you can choose depending on which type of synth you want to use. So down the left hand side uh, you've got the 17 sets of synthesizers. Uh, the filters are keywords and terms um, to choose from if you think that you want a specific sound. In the center column are the presets themselves, 2,000 of those. So this uh, synth and filters section is a really good way of honing in on the one that you want to use. And on the right hand side is a picture of the synth that you're going to be using with a description and then a size uh, that the preset is going to load because it's based on um, samples rather than all synthesis. So um, if we want to just dive straight in, say we wanted something uh, from the Pro-V set of synths which are based on the Profit sounds. Um, just pick one, double click and that loads in and that's ready to play. Alternatively, um, if you know that you're going to be after one specific uh, instrument or sound or timbre or style that you're looking for, um, you can just filter via the keyword section. So let's say we wanted a synth bass. This then is all of the synth basses within the software. Um, again, double click on one. And obviously depending on the size that uh, takes um, a couple of seconds to load in but still not too slow and so this is the Vega bass or if you want to you can um, filter by both categories so let's say we wanted something from um, the J60 series which is the Juno series and let's say we wanted um, a synth pad. So this is filtering J60 presets, anything that is a synth pad um, that will bring up for you. Double click. And there's your starting points. Okay, so when you think you've uh, got your starting preset and you want to now adapt the parameters, uh, you click on the little picture of the synth uh, next to the name box at the top, and that takes you into the face of the synthesizer that you are using. Um, fairly standard set of controls, um, oscillator 1 and 2. You can switch oscillator 2 in and out depending on the, the style of sound that you want. Uh, filter section, the filter envelope, amplitude envelope, and then various controllers for pitch bend and vibrato rate, uh, whether you want to play um, monophonic or polyphonic or the two different styles of legato uh, and a glide control, and then the LFO. The LFO, there's only a single LFO, so whichever speed and waveform shape that you're using, the pan and pitch, etc., will all modulate their uh, respective destinations at the same uh, tempo or speed. Uh, you can't separate them, so they are kind of stuck together. Um, what it is worth mentioning now, if I just take you back into here, is that whichever synthesizer you use, um, connected or unconnected, there's uh, a uniform set of parameters. So even though the face of the synthesizer looks different, uh, and they are supposed to look like the real thing, um, it is the same set of parameters, so oscillator, filter section, filter contour, which is the filter envelope, loudness contour, which is the amplitude envelope, controllers, and then the LFO. So whichever synth you're looking at, uh, you will find that eventually the parameters will all start looking the same. You've got a uniform set of parameters across all the synthesizers. They just look slightly different depending on which one you're using.
Okay, so we're back to our parameters page for this particular preset, which is a quite spiky lead preset. Um, just to show you a couple of things to look out for um, across all the synthesizers, the two oscillators. Um, one is the one based on samples. So if you're playing playing a, a a sound and you try to detune it while you're still playing it, you won't hear any difference, which confused me for a while. No difference whatsoever, but that's because it is sample based, so you need to re trigger each time you want to hear the difference. Quite interesting sound, I think you'll agree. Um, now that is different to uh, Oscillator 2. When that is switched in, you can hear it detuning, playing against oscillator one. You can hear that kind of phasing going on as the uh, the, the two tones are slightly further apart from each other. Uh, the next section, which is interesting, is the filter, uh, and this is one of the things that IK have done with this software, is that not only do you get the kind of original filter of the synth, but you get the choice of a few different um, filters for, from some class, classic synthesizers. So uh, the M type is from uh, a Moog transistor ladder, uh, the R type is a Roland IR3109, uh, C type is from a Curtis CEM3320, and the O type is from uh, is a Oberheim state variable filter, uh, and then a few of IK's uh, own filters. There's a phaser and a formant, so you can get some vowel sounds going. And then uh, their classic filter is um, a voltage control filter, uh, which I think is also on their um, sample tank software. So there's various sounds that you can create just by changing the filter type. Uh, so if we this is the the classic filter. Whereas if we change it to the format filter, then you'll find it become a bit more kind of vowel sound, and you'll see that certain parts of the parameters change depending on the filter that you're going to use. Again, if we have it on the phaser, it sounds different to our original preset. Let's just go back to our original. Got that, that classic Moog sort of sound to it. The next section we're going to look at is the effects section, and that's toggled by this button here. If you click that, you'll find yourself uh, in a 500 series or a lunchbox series kind of style of plug-in effects. Um, all of the synth presets come with variations and different types of um, effects already plugged in. Uh, as you can see, we've got a channel strip, which has a basic compressor uh, and EQ section. Got a rather fetching um, approximation of a, a 1176 compressor, even with the uh, all buttons in mode for all you old school types. Um, and uh, a tape echo unit. Um, if you want to change any of these effects, then you click in the name above them, and you'll find that you can get various amps, uh, distortion effects, dynamics and EQs. Uh, it's a rather good LA2A um, clone there as well. Um, various modulation effects, reverb and delays. You can see on the right hand side, we've already got a whole reverb on this, and some more filter types. Um, I particularly like the tape echo. Um, turn it on and off with the on and off buttons. Um, you can drive the input depending on what you want the echoes to actually sound like. Um, if you have quite a light sort of drive going in, they're going to be quite clean echoes. Whereas if you drive the tape quite hard, then the echoes are going to be distorted and it's going to give uh, a real kind of crunchy uh, repeat kind of sound. Sustain. Uh, this changes the time between the left and the right hand side. Sustain is um, the amount of the output fed back into the input. Uh, should you want kind of long delays happening. distortion happening at the end. 
uh, reverb. Again, based on some of IK's previous uh, effects from their other softwares. So that is the plugin section. So the next section we're going to look at is the arpeggiator, which is toggled on and off by the pyramid style of Icon. Um, we're just going to use a short preset here just so you can hear what the arpeggiator is doing a little bit easier. So this is just a short pluck kind of sound. Um, but when we go to the arpeggiator, you'll have to hear. Um, fairly standard modes, rates, octaves that can be used. Um, as most arpeggiators have, but it's this play button here which engages the arpeggiator, so you do need to click that if you want to hear the results of the arpeggiator. So uh, the basic one sounds like this. Or going up, or an up down. Randomized. change the number of octaves that it's going to affect. So we have three octaves. Okay, um, fairly standard stuff, but it's actually this section along here um, where you can really get creative with the arpeggiator. It's a 32-step arpeggiator uh, where you can change uh, a lot of the parameters that the arpeggiator is affecting. If we just set up a four-step preset so you can see uh, what I'm talking about. Firstly, you can affect the amplitude by changing the velocity of each of the steps. So instead of it being kind of quite a flat sound, you can have different levels for each of the notes. So it changes some of the um, percussive quality and obviously affects the effects going on down the line a little bit more. Um, and you can change the uh, note offset for individual steps as well. So you, you can change pitches individually rather than relying on changing the, the whole of the preset pattern as uh, octaves as we did before. You can just change one note if you wanted to. So we'll have step two, um, a fifth change. And you can also shorten or lengthen each of the steps by dragging these left to right. So if we have step one and step three is a little bit shorter, again, that's going to introduce some percussive qualities to it. Uh, it does also mean you can tie notes, so you can have steps which are longer than the others. So it changes the rhythm overall of the arpeggiator. Or if you wanted to, you could have uh, any number of steps play the whole chord. These buttons underneath here toggle between playing the whole chord as you played it in or a single note within the um, sequence that it's playing. So let's have step four as the chord and you get this result. So lots of rhythmic and tonal variations using the arpeggiator. Final section we're going to be looking at is the layer section, which is toggled with the layer icon here, and you use the ABCD keys here too. Um, up until now, we've just seen one synthesizer going through one set of effects um, and using one arpeggiator. With the layer section, you can start stacking synthesizers on top of each other, so four independent synths with their own effects and their own arpeggiator if you want them to. Um, and you can start playing them in unison across the whole of the keyboard, or you can start using split zones to play different types of sounds with one hand and other sounds with your uh, right hand. Um, so to start off with, I've got um, layer A as an iron lead sound, and layer B as a kind of sweeping sort of sound. Um, you've got the mixer panel here, which is toggled here, so you can change volumes of different layers. So um, if I turn the volume down of layer A, what we're going to listen to now is just layer B.
So by turning up the volume of layer A, we then start to hear the combination of the sounds together. Like I say, the synths are independent of each other, so you can go and change parameters on the iron lead sound without affecting the sound of the uh, sweep kind of sound. So that's the two together. Um, what I'm going to drop in now is on uh, the C section, um, I've got a bass kind of sound. But as you can hear, it's got its own arpeggiator, so a separate arpeggiator to the other two layers. Now you can either play them all together as a stack. Or you can start using splits. I'm only using a two octave keyboard here, so it's going to be quite a short split. But by um, telling the software which stack or which layer within the stack is going to be played by which key zone, what we can do is effectively uh, split the low sounding synth off by itself, and then the two stacked iron lead and sweeps to a higher octave on the keyboard and then you can play them together. Like I say, the arpeggiator is only working on this bass synth so that it's going to sound uh, a little bit separated and different if that's what you're after. And like I said, different effects depending on the layer. So that's the layer C, whereas layer B has separate section and the arpeggiator is just on that one synth, whereas the others are just being played flat. So there we have a quick rundown of IK Multimedia's Syntronic software. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time.